Lando Calrissian Norris. And what I deem his first masterclass drive of his career. I mean, let's let's to start, let's to start, where he was so in zen with his car that he charged his battery with the last four laps and he went for it and he got that. He just pipped Sir Lewis Hamilton for the fastest lap of the race. Tune in as Paul and I dissect, cry, whinge, and laugh about what was the Dutch Grand Prix. Yeah, America F1, America F1, it's a golden run, America F1. Paul? Hello. How do you love the intro, new <laughs> intro music? I like our intro. It's pretty cool. It's awesome, isn't it? And <laughs> it's, it's so retro modern. <laughs> it's so like your background. It's retro. It's modern. You have a fireplace. I mean, it's so fitting, you know? <laughs> now, we have this race this weekend. I mean, <laughs> what do you think, Paul? It's Lando at his best. Uh, I think that was one of Lando's best races. And what people haven't celebrated is he got the, the hat trick. He got the pole, he got the win, and he got the fastest lap. So now, it was amazing. Now, the Grand Clem, for <coughs> our viewers out there, the Grand Clem is when you get all three of the things that you mentioned, plus you lead every lap of the race. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know about the techno uh, the the oh, technical right. term. Yes, is it? So I I don't know, but he didn't lead every every lap. In no. fact, he lost on the first one. So, no, no. <laughs> which is which is kind of his like mo, right? Uh, no, this was more technical for both cars. Yeah, they 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 spend ages trying to balance the clutches. Uh, they do it digitally, and then there is a bit of manual where they release the clutch and they have to release uh, the gear at the same. Uh, the, sorry, so it's the it's the gearing the clutch and the pedal so it's all a balance in the end but it is digitized for them and they make a decision as to where when they're going to do this and it just failed miserably for both of them uh but they did say that it is pre pre-organized yeah and then lando even said that oscar's a better starter than he is typically and he even had a problem but let's save lando because that's what everybody's talking about. Let's save that for last. Yeah. Let's talk about the other drivers in this race, starting with one Fernando Alonso, who finished 10th. Pretty he good did. drive for that car. Uh, yes, it was, because Stroll came in 13th. Um, so I was surprised uh, Alonso was able to make it to 10th. And realistically, we should have seen, well, we should have seen Alexander Albon ahead of them. We should have seen Esteban Ocon ahead of them. And for once, let's give it up for Logan Sargent, who actually came home in 16th. Uh, <laughs> But it was ahead of Yuki, it was ahead of Kevin, it was ahead of Valtteri, it was ahead of Juan Joe. So, you know, the only reason he got is because they screwed up Yuki's strategy like nobody's business. Yeah. Yeah. He started out on on the soft, like Lewis, all the guys around him, they started on the soft. But instead of going to the hard, for whatever reason, RB, Cash Out, V Cab, RB, one number one, electron they <laughs> freaking went to the medium and then pulled them back in and went to the hard it was a three stopper which was yeah. a head scratcher because if they just went to on the soft because they held him out long and went to the yeah. hard he would have finished probably in the points because he was running in the points and it's just another head scratcher from that team and even though we're not talking about them it's it's maddening. It's maddening because I love Yuki. And I hate to see Yuki sad. Sad Yuki makes me sad. <laughs> yes, you are a Yuki lover, in fairness. Um, I, look, you know, when you're a little bit behind with your car from, uh, from your pole position, you're qualifying, you will throw everything at the wall to try and get a strategy to bring you forward. And it failed. That's all. It just failed for them yesterday. 
it failed mi- miserably. Did you yeah. see that Alonzo after the race? He was right under the McLaren looking around. He, you remember when years ago Seb yeah. the same yeah. on Inspector Seb and he's looking around? Well, <laughs> Inspector Alonzo, he was looking at every little bit. You can't touch the car, but you can look. Mm. And boy, was Alonzo looking. Uh, I, I did see something of that in the news today, actually. I didn't see it on the TV yesterday. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's right. You've got to find out what the next thing is. Um, you bring something back to the team and you say, listen, compared to ours, it's this way, or the strut is that way, or the arrow is this way, you know. Yeah, in in ninth place was, I think, the driver of the day. Like, they gave it to Norris. I mean, the guy qualifies first and he finished first. Why, why is that driver of the day? I don't get it. It's It's not. It's not about who you like. It's about who had the best drive. And I think that Pierre Gasly had his best drive of the year, finishing ninth in that dog of an Alpine. I mean, not only did he pass Fernando Alonso on track, but he held off Alex Albon and a whole train of guys and Hulkenberg and a whole train of guys behind him. That was his best drive of the year. Well, I mean, when you think the other dumpster fire car uh, came in in fifteenth with Esteban, um, and then for him to come home in ninth, it was pretty, it was pretty talented. Um, yeah, okay, we know Esteban can. Uh, we know that uh, Pierre can drive given the right moment, but the car is still a dog. And again, I think it might be a little bit track specific. Um, for Zandvoort is a very strange track, all of the banking, all that kind of extra downforce for the banking gives you more speed. Little things like that can really make a difference to a car. As we saw, we won't talk about it yet, but you know, as we saw, for instance, Mercedes getting caught out. Also, we got to mention the up and down weather conditions over the entire weekend offset the settings for everybody and therefore affected their pole positions and the qualifying. Yeah. So anyway, carry on. Next driver. Well, in eighth place, it's <coughs> mine's favorite driver, one Sir Lewis Hamilton, who I thought starting in the netherworld of like way back in the grid because of that fake free penalty position they gave him when uh, uh, Perez Perez, what? He's crying. He called, he called the guy Lewis an idiot. And he had literally three quarters of the track to go on his lap. Mm. Lewis yeah. was way on the corner, which I'll put mm. up right here for everyone to see. But how, where was he supposed to go? Into the wall, into the, into the, into the crowd. I mean, give me a break. He had so, he had the racing line. So what's he complaining about? <clears throat> because this is now what they do. They're like, uh, they're like footballers, oh. you know, if they can, you know, Oh, he touched me. Oh, look, he, he moved a hair on my arm. Penalty, penalty. But isn't that that is now the game? Anything you can do to the opposition, ah, look, I, I, you know that I have a, a a distaste for Red Bull and the antics. But uh, this is all part of the game, you know. Complain as often as possible about the opposition, and that's what they've obviously trained P- uh, 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 Sergio to do and Max to do at the moment's notice. They're in my way. They did this. They right. did that. They Everybody, all do yeah. So, anyway. yeah, and then yeah. the moment he called Lewis an idiot, which he probably probably shouldn't yeah. have done because. Yeah. He, so going but, back to our eighth position, Lewis. You know, but Lewis, he had something very interesting to say, Paul, and mm-hmm. he said that, and I quote: "Now this is a direct quote. If I didn't have the problem in qualifying, then yes, I think I had the pace today to be in the top five. If I started fourth, where George started." For example, I would have finished at least fourth. Is that yeah, a hundred percent slap? <laughs> and I believe the our friend in uh, seventh uh, started in fourth, uh, which was Russell. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that Lewis did a good race in the end, com- considering what was going on, uh, the false penalty, give or take, um, to get from, what was it, 14th to, you swapped the camera, that's so unnerving. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, sorry, everybody, but just like, I look back up at the camera and it's like, I'm over here. Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so look, he to start in 14th and to come home 8th was was actually, he, he made the most amount of moves uh, in the grid, I think. 
He did the most amount of proper proper overtakes. Fifteenth. I think he. I think he did the most amount of overtakes in the grid. Yeah, but I'm saying, didn't he start fifteenth? It was fifteenth. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think he started fifteenth, but because Albon started from the pits, and then somebody else, uh, so he ended up thirteenth, I think, or was it fourteenth? I think he started fourteenth. Um, so it was supposed to be fifteenth, but Albon's needed to start from the pits or something, so he got put, put up one place. Album was disqualified. Sorry, album was disqualified. Right. His car, his car was too wide by less than a fraction of a millimeter, which is, you know, I mean that's just taking the rules to the nth degree. Williams took it on the chin, but they sort of went, yeah, we were out by less than a. They said they couldn't even uh, explain how small a margin it was. Wow, that small. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, it was. It, so think of it: a millimeter mm-hmm. is something that you can sort of see on a ruler. Okay. But they said that it was like maybe a tenth or or twentieth of that millimeter that the that the frame was too wide by. Now, <clears throat> uh, Woody finished. George Russell, Woody is what we call. Woody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he finished in seventh. Now he started fourth. And they brought him in because he burned up the tires again. So he went from the tire whisperer that everybody was like, oh, he's the tire whisperer. He's the tire. And then now he burned up his tires just the very next race. So is he the tire whisperer or is he Woody? Who is George Russell? Because sometimes in some interviews, it seems like he's that pompous kind of arrogant guy. And then in other ones, he's like a lovable kind of like fun go lucky george russell and there's been reports and i don't know if you've seen this yet and that will buxton wrote an article today and he thinks that george russell is the talented mr ripley if there was a movie years ago called the talented mr ripley where the guy would pretend to be something to everybody and he's making the inference that that's george russell what what do you think about that paul George is a very divisive character. Uh, he's got a he's got a natural, unfortunately, he's got a natural snootiness about him, uh, which a lot of people looking into England uh, or people in England that don't maybe live in those kind of areas feel that he's a bit snooty, and therefore they don't uh, they don't gel with him. They don't feel comfortable with him. He's, there's a it is translated to the easiest words are arrogance. Mm. Uh, and people are not always comfortable with him and especially again I, I know I keep bringing it in but I'm a moderator on several clubs on Facebook and I see the comments and there's no stopping the tide uh, when you know people are saying such things and it's being uh, multiplied by many many thousands of comments so uh, I think that George acts like he's already a world champion Yes. And he isn't. Uh, yeah. And he has, a, and when he has the bit between his teeth, uh, okay, I'm going to hark back to something I've sort of said before. I consider George, not in the character, but in the driving style, I consider George to be like Bottas, who would be very good getting poles. Uh, but when it came to being ahead at the start of a race, when it came to the pressure, he would start to drop back and he would just give in or he'd get tired in the middle or he'd get tired towards the end. And I didn't necessarily have the same kind of tire control, tire tire management. Uh, and I kind of look at George in the same way. And I, I do think there's a bit of an air about George, but I think there's also, he is physically, naturally, <clears throat> there is an air about him because he is a very tall, thin person. and that potentially is going to generate uh, some people feeling that he's a bit snooty or arrogant but and his jawline his facial features they're very woody (laughs) very much yeah i mean you you could superimpose woody from toy story over george and there would be very little to 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 touch up right (laughs) but anyway he's look 
is George going to lead that team next year is the bigger question. Yeah. And if, T if Kimi Ank Antonelli gets in there, which we still don't know if that's going to happen. And, I, you know, everybody's throwing money down, but they could lose 99 it. 99% of it's going to happen, yes. <laughs> okay. 99. <laughs> so I still think it's going to be Bottas. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I'd, love I'll, I'd love it to be Bottas. I, I think he would be a safe pair of hands. And God love him. Zero points this year. Mm -hmm. That car is a... We talk about Renault being a dumpster fire. That thing's a volcano. Yeah. It's just melting on itself. It's a piece oh, of trash. Crazy, <laughs> yeah, lovely. absolutely. And it's destroying Bonas's career. Yeah. And and poor Go Gosha Yu is not getting a chance to prove who he is because he's actually not a bad driver. We've seen him when the car was stronger a year or two ago. He really um, isn't. He's not only is he not a bad driver, he's kind of smooth. And I just would love yep. to doesn't make any mistakes that much. I mean, the car's so yep. slow. Yeah. But he's never had that that moment where you're like, oh, that's a great qualifying or, oh, that was a great yep. drive because he hasn't had the car to do that. And it's so unfair yep. to him because he doesn't crash. He's not like Logan Sargent. He's not crashing every race. I mean, yeah. He, well, he th th think, think back to this. Think back to this. Um, how often do you hear that a, an incident has happened and, and Guo has been involved? And it's not very often. And they're the guys that are at the mat, the back of the pack. And usually they're the ones that get into the crumbles uh, at the first lap or whatever. And he's a pretty good safe pair of hands. He just doesn't have the car under him to prove himself. Um, <clears throat> so and it's so unfair that most likely he's he's out of the car next year and he probably doesn't have a drive. Uh, yeah, probably, but Bottas doesn't have a drive either. And it's it's very unfair. It, it it is what it is, but um, and it's Formula One, and they all take it on the chin, and they're still getting nicely paid, and they have sponsorships and adverts and everything else. So I'm not going to feel sorry for them, but at the same time, if there's a career there, a worthy career, then there are certain people that deserve to be in a car. There are also certain people that deserve to be dragged out of the car, kicking and screaming, and kicked off F1. And one of them is Logan Sargent. <laughs> Poor Logan had that crash, and it was a it was a pretty bad crash. Yes, uh, it was. And you know there was fire. <laughs> yep. But the mistake he made was beyond a rookie mistake because it was a wet track. Yeah. And yep. he went into the grass, had two wheels on the grass in the wet. So, of course, what's going to happen? You're going to spin out. No yep. other driver put two wheels or even one wheel into the grass in qualifying, or this was in practice. No other driver did it but Logan. And again, he's costing that team. Do you think his dad pays for it? Every time that car crashes, do you think his dad pays for that? No, I think Williams are suffering heavily with the losses caused by Logan's crashes. Will you see Logan Sargent in Monza? No. Oh, uh, yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. It's too soon. They wouldn't do it there. Um, look, James Vows is a very clever man. And he's running Williams at this stage. And I think he's touted to take over from Toto in a few years' time. Um, uh, in other words, to go back to Mercedes and to run Mercedes when he's learned enough at the helm in Williams. Um, I think that Logan... Okay, so they said the other day that Kimi was not going to be in the Williams next week. He was going to be in the Mercedes for the, um, for the trial. However, if you recall... We had George take the Mercedes when Lewis was unwell. Do you remember when he mm -hmm. ended up crashing? He crashed into Bottas. Um, and, you know, at those are pivotal moments. And if he, if Kimi gets to drive and drives well in FP1, there's every possibility that he may end up being offered the Williams seat um, for the rest of the season. So there's a three week break between Monza and the next race. And I wouldn't be surprised if Logan was gone, based on a financial point only. Uh, they, they, you know, they're earning a couple of points here and there, but it's 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 it doesn't matter. They're not earning enough points to make them any real money, so they've I mean, they've if, washed. If I'm if I'm one of the mechanics on Logan's side, I'm like get rid of this guy. Like my hands got cuts all over him. I am tired of putting this car back together. Every week, every time <laughs> this guy cries, I'm just tired of staying up all night. This guy gotta go. Where's my bone? Where's my bone? You, you, you know when they do those cutaways after a, a crash, and you get they picture the mechanics in the carriage, and you just see the mechanics in Williams go, and and then he realized he was on camera, and he just went. 
And he, you know, and they just stopped, they stopped, they stopped themselves from, you know, bad language and hands up and everything else. What could they do? I mean, it, it you know, people are going, oh, poor Logan. I'm sorry. He's been given the chance to run a Formula One car and he has done, I, I think he nearly beats Perez's damage record at this stage. Yeah, he, for sure. Or he's you know? probably up there where Mazel's been. You know, he, he, oh no, but this is for this season alone. Um, so Perez for this season, as we said before, was like 3.6 million. Yeah, he was his, leading, his, uh, <laughs> so I would say the Williams. Now, I mean, that Williams was just you could make four Williams out of the damage he did to that car the other day. Now, in sixth place was one Checo Sergio Perez, who yeah, had you know, he had his, <laughs> he had his moments and. I thought he did it, you know, sixth place he for did. that car. Uh, you know, I thought fifth, sixth was about where he should finish if he had a good drive, and that's where he finished. He finished sixth. He came home. So Max came home 22.89 seconds behind Lando. Right. Uh, Carlos came home 32.13. So he was 10 seconds down on Max. So actually, I think he's he's pulled up his socks. Yeah. I mean, that's about a good drive. I mean, that's... I think the Red Bull for where where they're at, they're still the second best car on the grid. But mm. I think pace wise, for per, Perez mm. fifth and sixth is where he's about. Yeah, that, that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I always said he's middling. He's middling in the top ten. Yeah. Uh, are, are you yeah. like taking growth pills right now? Sorry, yeah, uh, I'm just you trying to. Up? Yeah, I'm fed up being over here. So no, I was trying to. No, so I'm moving the camera, not no, myself. No, no, yeah. No, no. Apologies. Go on. Uh, so, yeah, look, I don't think it was a bad drive from Perez this time. I think he, look, he hasn't uh, recused himself from the whole thing. He hasn't fixed his driving and everything else, but he did a good weekend. He didn't crash. Uh, he put it in a, in a reasonable place. And he finished in six. So we can't, we've got to give it to him. I'm not going to give him a round of applause, no. but I'm going to say he's getting there. He's, he's trying to claw back. In fifth place, which I've, thought was a great drive because i think uh carlos <laughs> started in 12 and yeah. we didn't make q q3 mm -hmm. he had a good drive he had he did. at ferrari which was strange <laughs> because in, in qualifying the pace wasn't really there mm -hmm. but in the race both him and charles had great pace I mean, yeah, but he kept he kept uh, Perez at bay for for lap after lap after lap. I mean, he did a strong, he did a, 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 a Carlos sites of old, and he used tactics to keep Perez behind him, and he brought it up to the Ferrari. But I think everybody was surprised by uh, Charles's uh, Ferrari. You know, yeah. you know that the speed of it was not expected. So I think I think. Uh, he did a good job to to continue to challenge and keep, uh, sorry, to keep, uh, you know, Sergio at bay. Now, in fifth place was Oscar Piastri. Now, the funny thing about this, and it's not funny to me, he, he finished fourth. He started third. Yeah. And he only went back one place. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, he finished, what did he finish, 20, what, 26 seconds behind Landon? Is that I'll tell you now. Uh, who? Now, this is Oscar. Uh, Oscar. Yeah. Oscar was 27 seconds behind people, Lando. People are saying, oh, he finished 27 seconds behind. He's failing. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. one, it's just this race. Two, he was in dirty air. Lando was in clean air you can make more of a gap in clean air you know, mm. he's right behind he was behind charles leclerc forever and he couldn't get by him but he's in that dirty air so of course he's gonna lose time people calm down oscar's a good driver stop saying yeah, just because of one bad race and he still finished fourth and yeah his job is just to be ahead of perez and so they can win the constructors championship that's his job and I think he's doing um, a fine job of it. Well, again, look, this this relates to our next person, which is the person in third. So I think Oscar was in dirty air. I think that he had a slightly unlucky pole, although, again, he lost off the start line and so did Lando, but Lando passed and took back his position. Oscar didn't. Right. So, you know, th so from that point of view, um, he should have had the better of the Ferrari. 
uh, but he didn't. So he gets fourth. He deserved third. He drove mm, fifth. He didn't drive as well as previous. And, and, and again, this, this harps back to something I've said, which is the number two drivers, um, they have good days and bad days, where the number one drivers put it on the mark. Right. Uh, there was a wonderful film, many, just a sideline, there was a wonderful film uh, many years ago where uh, a race driver is, uh, is showing another driver what to do. And he goes out on track and he throws a coin at several points around the track. All right. And then he goes and fast oh, back. With, and he, uh, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> and he hits he hits the coin right. on every single marker, right, right? Right, right. And that's the difference between Lewis and Max, and let's say nearly Lando at this stage. And then the differences between George and Oscar. You know, it's uh, it's it's like this. It's it's just they don't hit the mark every single time, whereas the other guys hit that mark every single time. Thank and that's you. what I think. I just don't think, I think that Oscar is great. You can't slag Oscar. You can't give out about Oscar. He tries, he brings it. He's got a very calm head. He's trying to do uh, tire management, but he just, you know, if it was the, just the two McLarens in this race, mm -hmm. um, it would be Lando that would win. Say there was 24 races. Lando would win 20 of them. You know, he just has the edge on Oscar. That's all. Uh, I'm not. I'm not giving out. Of all the pairings of all the co-drivers and all the teams, I think Oscar and Lando are a good pairing. I think they are too. I, I also, yeah. I also <laughs> think that it's only his second year, and he's already got. Exactly. Him, so he's still going to evolve. He's still going to get better. I think yeah. we all can't be, you know, Lewis or Max or Alonso coming out the gate just firing. We can't. Lewis, always, did, Lewis didn't win in his first year. You know? What? No, Lewis, Lewis won his first year. Not in his first year. He like, didn't he win the championship, but he won exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. He he look. He's he won a, he won a race in pretty much every year except for the last couple of years. Um, no, no, no. Just I'm saying, Lewis didn't win this first year. Oscar's not going to win this first year. Oscar could be a contender next year if the if the McLaren is strong. Yeah, I, I believe Easily. that. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. Now, but I'm going to yeah. just add this before we move on to Charles. Yeah. Lewis should have won his first year, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, yes, he should he have. Yeah, absolutely. In China, because the the tires are all bald, fully bald. Yeah. Then he wins yeah. the championship, going away. Yeah, but that's one hundred percent McLaren's fault, but for not calling yeah. him in. and beaching it, beaching bad. it, just beaching it halfway in the pit lane on the grass. Yeah, yeah I'll never I'm forget that. Yeah, for that, and I'm even wearing the McLaren shirt in honor. Yes, you of are. In honor of, and I, I have the same shirt, except yeah. it doesn't. It nearly fits me as badly as it fits you. What do you mean? How's it fit? It fits well. What, what are you talking about? I know, I know, I know. Mine doesn't fit me. It was given, Mine was given to me by a friend, but it was like a, a, a medium size. And there's no way I'm getting into it. Yeah, it's a medium. I think I could just about get it on one arm. Oh, it's medium? You're wearing mediums? No, 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 but I'm saying the t-shirt that was given to me was like team size medium and there was no way I, I've never gotten to it. Here's a Hollywood question before we move on. Did you like yes. it with that light or like my face? Was it lit up better with light or should I turn the light Do it on? again. Turn it back so, on. Watch this. Turn it back on. Sorry about this, everybody. It's, you know, sure. I'm... Can't tell the difference, mate. Can't tell the difference? No difference. Can't no tell. Difference? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to turn it off. Do you do you like mine? <laughs> yeah, this it's only a small shadow on your right. Do you like mine with the light on or without? With it on. <laughs> when, when you turn the light off, you look you, you disappear. You're like turned. Yeah, away. I know, I know, I know. I have a huge arc light that's that's here. Anyway, yeah. let's move on. We don't want to bore our people listening. Oh, and by the way, can I please say? To the people that are listening to us in the car, driving along and enjoying us. Thank you so much for listening to us. A uh, big shout out to Daniel, my friend in America, who rang me and said, Hey, Paul, stilettos. Thank you, Sherman, <laughs> for the last time we did this. But uh, he, he told me, he said, Paul, you know, for somebody that's not really into Formula One, I listen to your podcast when I'm driving along and I really enjoy the banter. And I learned stuff about F1. And he was, you know, and it was just really touching to know that people are listening to us in that way. So 
That's 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 very nice of him to say, and it's always nice when people share comments and say that they like our show. It it really does. It's really the reason why we do it. We do it for the love of Formula One, you know. And and we're gonna take that moment to remember everybody out there to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell button so you can be notified when we have a new episode up. You know, America F1, Paul and I really love what we do. We lo- we love bringing F1 to your living room or into your car or even I, I see these guys with motorcycles and, and mini bikes now with their little radios. So whatever you're listening to us on, we truly appreciate it. Please tell a friend, tell a family member, because America so- F1 is growing and we can only grow by the love of our friends. So thank you so much. 100%. Now, speaking of Charles Leclerc, who is going to be pairing with one Lewis Hamilton next year, which I, I can't wait for, Paul. I just yeah, can't no. wait for Lewis to get out of this team. I really yeah. can't. And it's going to be a glorious day seeing Lewis in red. But Charles and Lewis, I mean, two like model-like type guys, it's going to be... I, I, I'll live in their house if, if it's okay. If they let me move in, uh, I can I can do floors. I can cook kind of, you know, I'm not, I can, you can put out fires. I put out fires on my fireman. I can I can do all <laughs> kinds of things that have to do with disasters for you. But you know, just let's let's spend, let's hang out. Let, me, yeah. Lou, Charles, let's let's go on a boat. Let's hang out. Like I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, look, I think they're going to be a great pairing. They actually like each other. They, When you watch the sort of off-camera moments that they're not really supposed to be seen, they're always hanging together and talking. Whenever you, they do, they're on that trailer around the start of the track, they're always the ones that are together. I think Charles is really looking forward to Lewis coming to Ferrari. I think that, you know, as a race driver, he secretly thinks he's going to have the upper hand with Lewis because he's been there a longer time. But I think that he's going to get an education from Lewis and I think it's going to be to his benefit because he will still probably be there in three years time four years time in Ferrari as in uh, Charles whereas Lewis is going to make an exit within two or three and I think that uh, Charles will take whatever he can Um, I, I have concerns I mean they've paid an awful lot of money for the glory of having uh, Lewis at Ferrari, but will he get, you know, the equal treatment or will they unequal, which is really bad English, but will they unequal Charles's car occasionally to ensure that Lewis gets the best of the best because he's going to be there to make a mark for a couple of years. It's obvious that now let's, let's just put aside the engineering and the pit stops and the strategies and on fire. Uh, and let's put that stuff aside for a moment. Is the car, would the car currently, if Lewis was in it, would it be higher up the grid from a championship point of view? And, you know, we know that we know that Carlos is good. We know he is, but would it be in better hands if Lewis was there? So, oh, and that brings us to a moment we forgot to mention with, with, uh, Carlos, that he said something recently along the lines of he's equal to or better than Lewis. <laughs> yes, he did. I remember that. He didn't say <laughs> and that. I and I believe my my response on Facebook and on social was, "Hey, Carlos, can you speak up? We can't hear you at the other end of the grid in the Williams garage for next year." <laughs> Carlos, it, it, you know it, that's a good point that you bring up. Not only does Carlos think he's better than Lewis, apparently uh, Woody thinks he's better than Lewis, too. Like, I'm yeah. tired of these guys who are good drivers. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to take anything against Carlos. I'm not going to say anything against George. They are good drivers. Yep. But they're not all-time greats. Lewis Hamilton has more wins, more podiums, more pretty much everything <laughs> than anybody in Formula One history. Stop. Com- it's like... Some middle guy who plays soccer comparing himself to Pele or something Mm. like, come on, you can't do that. Don't compare yourself to an all time great. Be the best that you can be. Okay. Be the best Carlos Sainz that you can be. Be the best George Russell that you can be. But don't try to compare yourself to Alonzo and (coughs) Verstappen and Hamilton and Senna because no, you're not it. You're not it. 
Uh, I agree. I agree. I had, I had a guy on Facebook uh, yesterday, and he was trying to say that James Hunt was the best driver of all time, and that he was, and I quote, more popular than Lewis. And I had to school him and explain to him that, you know, Liberty Media went to Lewis when they were buying F1, and they said, Lewis, we see what you've done on social media, especially with the Americans. And they said, can you talk to us, please? And because of the conversations with Lewis, they said, okay, there's money in this, number one. There is fans in this, number two. So, Lewis, what are you doing? How are you doing it? And because of that result, they went back to every team and said, right, you want your portion of the pie. You're going to have to create a huge, you're going to have to create a social media following. And that is why within, within I think, six months or something, every team suddenly had a social media following and all the drivers did. And, and they do all these challenges and things to, to bring forward all of their social media approach, which then led them to the Drive to Survive, which I know lots of you don't like the Drive to Survive. Some of us do. I like the background, like the, the emotional the yeah, yeah. And I like the background y stuff that you don't get to see when it's just race day. So anyway, for for some it's great fun, for some it isn't. Uh and that's fine. I respect everybody's views. But uh at the end of the day, <laughs> Lewis has more social media following and fans than Charles Lando, Alonso, and Seb combined. And yeah. He is the biggest, whether you like him or hate him. He has the biggest following uh, on in many forms, in many, many forms. Anyway, this is not the Lewis Hamilton Appreciation Show. We're talking about 10 to 1 uh, with the drivers. But I just feel that, uh, I don't know, we're going back to Charles here. Come on. Uh, Charles will be happy that Lewis is in Ferrari until he isn't. They always <laughs> are, right? Every, every, yeah. You're always happy till you're not. But I think Charles has a better attitude than George does. Where George should be picking Lewis's brain. George should be like Lewis's best friend, learning everything he can from mm -hmm. Lewis. But what he does is denigrate. What he does is put Lewis down. What he does is give backhand comments. And I'm sure that rubs Lewis the wrong way. And the reason who, why who George who does that? Oh, George, yeah, he has yeah, made he several has comments that were a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah and, they were off color. Of just, just being in the basket of the glow of learning learning from the master. That's what I would be doing. Like he yeah. could be like Obi-Wan Kenobi and I'll be like yeah. uh, Luke Skywalker. And I'm just learning as much as I can from this guy before he leaves. That's what I well, would he'll get. He'll now get the, he'll now get the data. He'll get the track application data. And that's, what's going to help uh, Charles a lot. Right. A lot. Now, and he'll probably teach him a little bit of tire management because actually Charles is not good with tire management. No, there's only a few actually on this grid right now that are, good with tire management yeah absolutely aren't, aren't yeah. great with tire management and speaking of great and speaking of tire management one max Verstappen in a car that he says cannot turn finish in second place and he since you're doing that he's <laughs> and the thing that bothers me about max and is really doesn't bother me about him personally. It's that FIA that he has in his back pocket and that he can like get away with everything. Yeah. And I okay. So everything. explain what you're referring to. So in qualifying, Max has this thing and he's done it multiple times where he actually passes people in the line to go out. There's a white line. Once you pass that barrier, there's a that white wasn't, line. That, that wasn't qualifying. That was in Practice three. There's a white line in practice or in qualifying. And once you come out past that barrier, you're not supposed to have a tire over this line. Now, Max Verstappen has had this tire in the Dutch Grand Prix in practice <clears throat> over the line, like significantly over the line. And no penalty. No, nothing. Now, Max has gotten reprimanded for impeding this season and last season with no penalty. He's stopping in the pit lane in quality, then pretending to have an issue, crashing into the drivers, overtaking in the pit lane over the white line on exit. It's actually an embarrassment for the stewards, I think, because you want to say to everybody that there's equal treatment under the rules and it's yep. obvious to me it's obvious to paul and it has to be obvious to the audience that max Verstappen has the fia on speed dial in his back pocket and he can do oh. it all. 
Okay, so just for just for the audience' sake, uh, so after uh, Logan Sargent torpedoed his car uh, <laughs> and put literally put it into enough parts to make four more cars, uh, there was only minutes left, and I do mean minutes left of the practice. So everybody was filed, ready to go out of the pit lane, and Max jumped ahead. He actually overtook somebody in the pit lane where they're, they had just cleared the mechanics. And I was horrified. I was like, surely he can't do that. But apparently you can. But then he goes and he tried to pass. And I don't know who it was that he went around the white line, but he actually put the wheel pretty much over the rear wheel was completely over the white line in passing somebody else on the exit of the pit lane. And everybody, and I mean, everybody went, oh, that's going to be a penalty. That's going to get you in trouble. And of course, as always, Golden Balls gets no penalty, gets to walk straight through. And this is where we sort of go, you know, at what point are the FIA applying the rules fairly to everybody and being, uh, you know, uh, helpful to, to Max? And it, it's, you know, and then we see the opposite where, you know, Lewis is accused of blocking Perez, uh, which in our eyes, he actually really wasn't doing. So it, you're right. There just seems to be an extreme favoritism uh, heading towards Red Bull for some reason. And, uh, and they don't, don't need it. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. They don't need favoritism. It's Sorry. Without that favoritism, without that favoritism, they wouldn't have won 2021, which was a fix. Uh, and I don't care whether you're a fan of Max or you're a fan of, of Lewis. And I believe there's, an, uh, there's some sort of podcast or, or video or whatever. And now Max has said, yeah, well, technically Lewis is an eight-time world champion. Uh, but I don't know if this is true or not, but I've seen this in the last couple of days. Max is supposed to have said this himself now, uh, that he believes that 2021, if the rules had been followed, he wouldn't have won that championship. Now, I don't know. Is Max mellowing? Did he actually say it? I don't know. But uh, look, either way, I I do think that there is a favoritism towards Red Bull as far as the FIA is concerned. Um, And there is a story here, if I may, um, regarding... uh, So what's come about is... uh, And I'm probably going to get shot down for this one. Uh, Jos Verstappen, Max's father, has come out and said... And he, he said... I'm annoyed, Max is annoyed, the team didn't listen, this, that, and the other. Now, we all know that uh, Total Wolf is making a serious play for uh, Max, and I genuinely wouldn't... um, I genuinely wouldn't discount the concept, uh, and people have not even thought about this, but Max heading to McLaren in the future as well. Um, So with that in mind, I wonder... Is this a kind of, you know, there's been a to and a fro fight happening. So, and I've said this before, we'll say it again. Uh, about six, eight months ago, when all the trouble was brewing and everybody was talking about there was a potential uh, overthrow. Uh, so, Christian was trying to take the team. So, for those that don't know, again, it's 51% owned by Thailand and 49% owned in the Netherlands. No, not the Netherlands, in Austria. Austria. <laughs> Austria, where where the parent company, so the father, the owner of the company, died at Dietrich Messerschitz, and then it became a bit of a free for all. When the dust had settled, and you know the flowers started to grow on Dietrich's grave, there was undertones that there was stuff happening, and they wanted to try and take the team away from the Austrian uh, parent company, uh, and the Thai owners were backing Christian to do so, and it just seemed to anger everybody. It seemed to annoy. Uh, Helmut Marco, uh, it seemed to really pee off Jos Verstappen and therefore Max. And there was all these different things happening. But it just looks like to me that now the car has been slipping. And I love the fact that there is a public counter out there that it's been 65 days since Max won a race, right. uh, which is like, you know, the industrial accident sign. It's been 65 days since our last accident. Well, it looks like, you know, Max is not winning. And that's five races he hasn't won. Uh, and it just seems there's a bit of an undertone, a bit of an overtone, that uh, this could be the nail in Christian's coffin, that if it got to the point where Jos and Max decided to threaten Christian, that uh, they didn't listen and they're going to leave and go to another team. And he would say, well, what does it take for you to stay? And they went, well, you need to go bye-bye because you're not listening to us. And that's what I'm trying to get at here. I don't see if 
Say Max came with that ultimatum. I think they would let him go. And the reason why I think that is because I think behind the scenes that he's a handful to deal with. And I think his dad is a handful to deal with. And everybody has an ego in this business. And they would say, okay, well, if he's going to walk, we're out of this headache. And then now we'll just bring Carlos Sainz in because he has it in his contract that he can leave to any top team that he wants to. We'll bring Carlos Sainz in. If Max goes to Mercedes, then we'll just bring George in too. And we'll have George and Carlos Sainz in the car. We'll have two good drivers in the car and we'll move on. Because they always say, and Total Wolf always says this himself, that engineers are more important than the driver. Do you remember when he said that? And he was, so if engineers are more important than the driver, I think if I was one in charge of Red Bull and I was one Christian Honor, I would say, Max, thanks for the championships. It's been nice. It's been real. Go ahead. Go, go to Mercedes and enjoy your time because that headache, Oh, and that cloud over that team that Max Verstappen obviously brings would be gone. And then take Helen Marco with you, too, because I, I don't like this old guy walking around the paddock always telling me what to do all the time anyway. So he he's can like be, 80. He's like yeah. 81. How relevant, how relevant do you need to be? Yeah, Go. Retirement. <laughs> retirement and enjoy your life. You know, so yeah. both of them could kick rocks if I was Christian Horner and I'd be happy. Yeah, but look, you got everyone's got to remember that Christian was the creator of that team. He went to Dietrich, um, you know, but I think that we're sort of ignoring something here. There's a board involved, and Christian is not the board. Um, so if they were peed off enough that they thought that they were going to lose, because remember, at the end of the day, a board makes money. They want their shares to be worth something. Um, if Max goes, will that car get to the front again, or will they have another, you know, out in the out in the boonies for another three? Well, how long was it since Sip Seb won a championship? It was a long time. It was ten years or something, so, eight years. We we because uh, the last the last win, so uh, Mercedes won four champ uh, eight championships in a row, and I think the previous was uh, was uh, Red Bull. So therefore, you know, they spent eight years in the wilderness trying to catch up again. Um, so risking losing Max uh, or it's it's a bit of a, you know, it, it, it's all up in the air, and one day it's going to happen. I mean, I heard the other day Max is now talking about retiring because he doesn't care about Formula 1. He doesn't care about no. racing. He just I'll do it while I'm doing it and if you mess me around, I'll just, I'll go. I don't care. He doesn't care. He's made probably 100, 200 million. He doesn't care. He, it's, he is not motivated by the money. He's not motivated by any of it. And I think he's a bit like Alonso. Not that he wants to prove he could win three or four different style of championships, different, not formulas, because they're different things. But I think he's got his eye on Le Mans. I think he's got his, I don't, I don't, see him ever getting into India. I don't think the Americans would put up with his antics. Um, but I do see him just walking from Formula One if he doesn't I mean, like I what he sees. He's only... He's, sure. Yeah, yeah. And look, he's not going to settle for cars that are not performing the way he wants them to perform. And he he's back moaning already. And this is what this conversation is, is that he and his father are moaning at Red Bull that they're not listening. Uh, but the truth of it is, they just can't accept that they may have a car that's not going to be as dominant as it was. And exactly. this, would be the, this would be the max of all. And, and, and to the shot, to all of the Orange Army that I, I have to just give this shot. And, and don't <laughs> hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hate me. We had a great time in Austria last year. We all partied all together. So I love the Orange Army. But you told me that Max could win in a tractor. You told me that. And now he has a tractor and he's not winning. Okay. He hasn't won in five races. So you told me that it was all Max. But now you see that it's just not all Max. You have to have a team around you. You have to have a, a developed car. And you also told me that he can win in the second and third best car on the grid. Well, he has that now. And he's not winning. So do I say you got a little mud in your eye now? Do I say it? Am I happy that you have a little mud on your eye? Or should I just say I told you so? Because I told you so. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't that's all. Me that's again. <laughs> Winning this race a... was okay. Lando Calrissian Norris, and this is the Lando. Yeah, yeah. I said it again. This is the Lando. Yeah, yeah. Preach, baby. I say it again. This is the Lando yeah, yeah. that I love because this Lando is the. Cheeky Lando. This Lando is the trolling Lando. This Lando is the one who has his helmet off and he looks at the crowd and he puts his hand over his mouth saying shh to the crowd. This Lando even said this. And I don't know if you heard this. And when he crossed the finish line, this is what, this is what, oh. Yeah, give it context first. So, Super Max. Well, you give, you give it context. Okay, so so Max being unemotional, as always, usually when he wins a race, goes, simply lovely. <laughs> simply lovely. And yesterday, when Lando won... He play. said, and here we go. That was simply lovely. That's Max. It was a great race. Unbelievable balance as well. Uh-huh. Simply lovely, huh? <laughs> bitch slap bitch slap I love, I love this Lando. i love the cheeky lando i love the troll Lando. Yeah. he's a great troll and if that if this was the lando we would see more often the fun the happy the cheeky <laughs> the the meme type lando more people would like lando yeah there was no tears there was no Jumping into the into the arms of his mechanics, it was a controlled win, and it was an amazing race from his point of view. He lost the start, and he didn't panic. He just did what they do, saved the tires for 15, 10, 15 laps, and then bingo, here I am. And the, the pass that he did, I didn't like the jink that Max did. He jinked just a tiny bit, and then... The, ex the closing speed, the acceleration and the passing that Lando did on him. And then the two of them went into the bend together, but they were clean with each other. And, and what do you call it? Max knew. And he let him go. And that was the way it should be. But then the gapping that he gave him, my gosh, within, within a lap or two, I think he was like one, then he was 1.5, then he was two seconds ahead. And to finish that race, 22 and a half seconds ahead, we all bitched and moaned and groaned about how the Red Bull was doing that to everybody else. And now McLaren just see ya and gone. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful piece of racing from Lando. It was controlled and uh, he did well. But his his little uh, bitch slap on the radio afterwards was hilarious. I, I, oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe he did it. I mean, it was brilliant. I and there's a great meme and i'll put it up here that has it'll have it has <laughs> matter of fact i think i have it I, let me see if i can put it up right now okay. so you can look at it it's so funny okay here it is <laughs> oh, yeah. the vampire with sunlight and he's scared and then they have superman with kryptonite and he's scared and then they got lando <laughs> turn one lap one one turn one. And he's scared. <laughs> every time they're going to have to adjust they're gonna have to work out these stars on the cars because it's just costing them places. It cost it cost Oscar. Lando was lucky he got it back, but it cost Oscar. And if they'd have got those starts right, um, and it's not I'm not blaming the drivers. They, they've said that it's 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 70, 80 percent mechanical. It's preset based on what they think the track is going to be like and what right. is necessary to to release the clutch and the accelerator at the same time. And uh, yeah, so it was just a bad day for them on the starts, but. They recouped. Uh, now, they Paul, you, you wanted yeah. to bring something up about the on track <clears throat> experience that people were talking about at the Dutch Grand Prix. Yes, um, I was quite surprised. Uh, we, we were watching it on TV, and I, it was interesting enough. There was there was probably a moment or two during the the latter part of the race, probably you know, twenty laps to go. It was getting a bit monotonous, a bit. Nothing was really happening, <clears throat> but uh, but apparently, because don't forget, there was a record number of overtakes in uh, Zandvoort the year before. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there really wasn't that many overtakes this time. Nothing of note. Uh, yeah. And well, I spoke to note that I saw that I love was remember when Magnussen was ahead and four <laughs> cars passed him. Did mm -hmm. you see that? Like he Sorry, was ahead and he was it was a DS 
DRS train and Magnuson was ahead and stopping, you know, all these guys were fast. So the them. five of them, four of them passing oh, him. Oh my great. God. That was, that was a great shot. That, that looked like an indie race and it was pretty scary. Actually, Albon said um, that was really stupid, but he wasn't referring to, to that it was badly timed again with the vocals that we hear in the public versus mm. when it was actually played on the radio and what it actually was was an album was alluding to was magnuson was uh, holding deliberately holding up uh uh sorry was holding him up because he was trying to help hulkenberg right which is a tactic they've used before and it's a bit dangerous at high speeds and coming into corners and stuff. So that's actually Albon had to do an avoidance on Magnuson. Uh, and that's why he said that was a stupid thing to do, but it got played as everybody swamped Magnuson and they yeah, all overtook awesome. him. And it was, wow. Yeah. It was, was, it was probably the most exciting part Even of the, in the race. Mac, uh, podcast <clears throat> room. They were talking about it, him and, uh, and Charles and Lando were like, whoa, like they're looking yeah. at them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that, that kind of crazy. Yeah. It, it has, has this concept from a tactics point of view. Occasionally when their car isn't strong, protect the guy in front. So mm. be a pain in the ass to the guys behind. Uh, that's really what they're up to. And they tend to run very long on their tires, which means they have very little grip. So they're going much slower than the cars behind. Now, sorry to take you off on yep. that tangent, but you were talking Sorry. about the on-track experience that people were talking about at Zendo. Yeah, so I have a couple of friends, and actually we had uh, we had uh, somebody who was on this podcast, uh, was at the race, and they said they really thought it was boring. Uh, for the people that were there, it was quite boring, and they said they wouldn't be buying tickets again to go to Zandvoort, which I thought was very surprising. Um uh, but I mean, because we saw it, the crowds were whipped up by the DJs yeah. and they seemed to be enjoying it. And they took Max's loss in good spirits. Right. Um, but apparently just from an on-track experience, they just said it wasn't that great. And they wouldn't be going again as a paid customer, which I thought was sad. It was a shame. Well, you know, I'll tell you. And sometimes I've noticed this because I've been to quite a few of these races now. Probably, you know, I'm up to like maybe 15, 14, something like that. <laughs> Which is yeah, yeah. I, you see, what that's a lot of races. Yeah. So the races I have the most fun at, they have a lot of ex the experience for the track. They'll have you know old cars. They'll have new cars. They'll have a lot of cars for you to look at when you're walking around. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fan will they have a fan zone, and better races have really good fan zones. And they have lots to do while you're while there's other things going on, you know, while practice is going on, where Porsche racing is going on, or F2 or F3. There's a lot of other things that you could do. And those are always the races I have the best experience at. Some oh. of the races, they're so cheap, they're trying to wring every dollar out of everything. They, there's not much to do other than watch the race. And those are the races that I won't go back to because there's nothing sure. else to do. Give me Give me one second, sure. Just give me one second. Now, why, why uh, Paul is going obviously to either the bathroom or to pick up a drink, or maybe even to relight his cigarette that he likes to smoke. We will no, no. It's closing my curtains because it's dark. The experience to talk about Haas. And how they could barely get their cars <laughs> away from out of the Netherlands because they owe nine million dollars to oh you're back nine million dollars to yeah, yeah yeah you I think it's called Euroleki they're the largest fertilizer producer in Russia in the world I think and because they booted uh, Spinderella and the, the, the son um, Mazaspin as we called him. So they booted him out at the beginning of the war with Ukraine. And uh, they were also sponsoring at the same time. So he basically bought the son a seat. Right. Uh, and because they booted him, they said, right, well, you owe us the money back. And um, they've taken Haas to court. So as I call it, Russia versus uh, 
Russia versus America, uh, because it's Gene Haas. And they were to pay. There was already a judgment to pay. And Gene just did what Gene does and didn't want to pay and delayed payment. So eventually they took them to court using, I think, a court in Zurich. Um, and the judgment was made and there was to be a cessation or a cessation of goods, a seizure of goods. Um, and that was going to stop them from actually leaving the track with the goods. And then everything was satisfied and done. I believe they were allowed to leave today. So they were heading for, to Monza today. It's amazing to me that a team could owe a sponsor money. The sponsor gave you money and then you cut the sponsor because of political what have you. And then you don't give them their money back. Why would one, why would you do that? Two, they should be owed damages and interest because that's money that we gave to you that's supposed to be put to use. So if it's not put to use, then what did you do with the money? And if you use that money to enhance your team, then you need to either one, give us our money back, or two, give us another sponsorship or make it make us whole is what they call it. Yeah, they, they, they've tried. They tried to force them to put him back in the car uh, for next year. Uh, so, and I don't know about damages. I don't know what the actual judgment entailed, but yeah, I, I don't think you're totally wrong with that. Uh, but, you know, at the moment, trying to take any court case from the point of view of Russians and seized goods, and you, you've heard plenty of yachts being seized and properties and everything else, and those funds are being used to channel back into Ukraine to help with rebuilding and armaments and what have you. So I don't know what the, the gameplay here is, but it's um, it's certainly I'm very surprised they, they had to give the money back. But uh, rightfully, you know, from a moral point of view, sure, they should have given the money back straight away and said, listen, sorry, legitimacies are we can't have your son racing first. Therefore, we can't also have your sponsorship. And here's your money back. But it's Gene House. You know? <laughs> <Almost like laughs> years ago, wasn't it Lotus that owed um, uh, Kimi Raikkonen money and didn't pay Kimi Raikkonen, right? Yeah. I mean, it seems to be kind of in Force Indy also, as I remember. So it's kind of almost a pattern in Formula One to take people's money and then not pay them. I, I think there's a difference. So there's a story behind, uh, there's a story behind, you know, with Kingfisher Beer, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the owner, was was done as well and he wasn't allowed to leave the country and stuff there was all sorts of stories there um so yeah i mean there's been a there's been some people who make an awful lot of money and then they they have a, a an ego that wants to propel themselves into formula one to own run and back a team or drivers or sponsorships and there isn't always the the morals to go with it, the business acumen to go with it. So some people have fallen afoul. But there are also small teams that genuinely do run into trouble and, and can't afford to pay uh, their fees to their drivers. That happens too. That has happened. Uh, I'm sure if we go back, there's probably, it's happened to probably 20 drivers over the years um, or more. You know, we've seen a lot of teams saved. Uh, and Bernie Eccleston was still in charge at the time. And, you know, we saw three teams go down in, I think, one year. Uh, they had to leave. So, uh, but now the balance is that's why they have the budget in place, is to try and keep all those teams in place. Go ahead. Now that we're going to <clears throat> the circuit that I love, I went to Monza last year and I had a great time in the Topo <laughs> In my Ferrari gear, which I bought on <laughs> because I didn't want, and it was everybody was in red, and I was like, "Ooh, I better uh, buy something here because I have my Mercedes stuff on." I was like, "I, I better take this stuff off <laughs> and buy some Ferrari gear so I can fit in, you know, and people can like treat me nicely." So I, I bought me my first Ferrari gear because well, I mean Lewis is coming to Ferrari anyway, so I had to buy it eventually. So I, I did it, and I had a great time, and I, we stayed in Milan. And we take the train over to Monza. And I mean, I love Italy. My wife's Italian. I love Italy. I can't wait to go back. What do you expect next week at the Monza Grand Prix? Ball? Well, you know, Ferrari builds their car to be heroes in Monza. So I'm expecting straight line speed from them. Uh, 
and I expect the weather is different than it was in Sandvoort. So I think the Mercedes are going to run well there. I think Red Bull is still going to struggle. And I think we're going to be surprised as to where the McLarens are. <clears throat> I'm not saying Lando's going to get the podium, but I'm saying I don't think Max is going to get the podium either. Because there's everything to play for here with Mercedes and Ferrari. And, now, and, I, I, and by the way, just to follow up, I did say on the show last week when we did our pre, you know, who's going to win, who's yeah, going right, to do where, right, right. and I did say, you can rewind it, <laughs> I said Lando, I said Lando, Max, and, uh, Lando, Max, and... Like hell I don't, like hell... <laughs> it's hell Peter, like hell Peter. I... Yes. <laughs> I think you said Lando, Max... I don't. I don't know if you and, said. And Lewis, I said Lewis. Yeah, yeah, you so, said Lewis. yeah. yeah so I said Lando, Lewis. Max, yeah. Lewis. Yeah. So I was I right. Them. I got Lando, Max, and, and I gave like four it. different ones. Yeah. So I got. I got it right too because I gave four different ones. So I got it right. Yeah, I told you off for that. I said you can't have four. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, okay. Well, while we're talking about Monza and next week and everything else, what's your prediction? Well, I think uh, I look for one Alex Albon to get into the points because Williams is always good. With straight line speed you know it's a good one yeah so i look for alex to come back into the points i also look for yuki to be back in the points because he's <laughs> well because he's yuki but because i think that they have to make up for all you know what they've done these last couple of weeks one with yuki's car and one with daniel's car so I, I expect them to make a comeback into the points I don't. Well, that means the top ten position, and I don't see that happening at yeah. Monza for, for Yuki and, and yeah. Well, Co. I think maybe Alba. Yuki or Daniel or will be tenth, and I think Alex or or Gasly or Ocon will be ninth. That's that's okay. 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 Yeah. And, and then, then you're then, piling everybody in. Then there's, there's six of them. Well, there's nearly eight of them now. So you've got like the two the two mclarens yeah the two mercedes the two ferraris and the two red bulls yeah. so that's going to take up eight of your slots it surely will but i think perez might uh crash out but if he doesn't crash out actually he's really <clears throat> decent at monza is that a, is that, a, is that actually, a crashy track is that a crashy track though except for the hairpin at the start in the is start. that a that's is only, that a crashy only track the start. only the start usually yeah a lot of uh injuries or, or crashes and i won't say injuries mm. a lot of crashes usually happen in, at the start of the race on that first turn but perez usually does well i think he got one two it was one two last year it was max uh and perez last year. so I yeah well the car was different <laughs> you know. but no i mean they're usually red bull this year has had good front line speed down, down okay great yeah they just have had problems lately because you know the break of I don't say yeah. oh, oh, break thing. They're having problems turning the car, but we don't hear Perez saying he's having problems turning the car. And that goes to you know the conspiracy theory that they do have two different cars. But anyway, having said that, I am gonna go with just because it's it's Monza, I'm gonna go with Charles to win or Carlos to win this race. Just okay. because of Monza, and I have to pick them because if I didn't, people would probably like throw stuff at me. Well, if they win, if they win, either of them at Monza, the crowd, the Tifosi, will go bananas. It would be an amazing win, uh, home race. It would be nice to see Ferrari get a win. Would that be their second win this year? Yeah, it would. Yeah, uh, and it would be it would be amazing. Be their third. Because oh, Carlos have they won a race, and so has uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, right, Carlos so, yeah. won in Australia, and then Charles won in, of course. Okay, uh, so it will be amazing to get a Ferrari win uh, again. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to discount the Mercedes or the McLarens. See, it's it's either going to favor or, or it's going to hamper either the Mercedes or the McLarens, the straight line speed stuff. So it's going to be, I'm looking forward to it. And we don't have long to wait. Yay. Yeah, we don't have long to wait. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love it when it's week on week, Grace. Yeah, I really too. do. Yeah. And, well, thanks everyone out there for joining us for another episode of America F1. And we talked and recap the Dutch Grand Prix. And stay tuned next week as we either talk about a Ferrari win in Monza or maybe 
somebody else that we least expect because there's a safety car and there's something this and something else happens. And then somebody else can add their name to the winning board of this year's Formula One season. Can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent Keep and horrifying news everybody. story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing. And listen to America F1. <laughs> <laughs>